How's it going all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, I get to give you an advanced look at the Wasted Space Cosmic Collection Omnibus from Vault Comics. So, join me. This video is sponsored by Vault Comics, so thank you so much to the folks at Vault for sending us an exclusive advanced copy of this hardcover. So a few years ago in 2019, I read the first trade paperback. My buddy Kyle sent me the first trade and I fell in love with the world of Wasted Space, the characters, the world building, and I wanted more. So I got the rest of the trades. So I'm glad that Vault decided to kickstart this to make it possible for all 25 issues to be available just in one place. So yes, this was completely funded by Kickstarter. However, it's not exclusive to Kickstarter, and I'll explain towards the end how you can get yourself a copy of this book. Now, if you kickstarted this, rest assured your copy is being fulfilled. As a matter of fact, they're sending those copies out within the next week or so. So the Kickstarter had all the bells and whistles, the signed book plate, the pens, and extra goodies like that. Now that was available through their Kickstarter. But we're going to be looking at this particular book that comes in this wonderful slipcase. We'll look at it together here in a second to get a closer look and talk about wasted space. So actually, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this Cosmic Collection omnibus so it does come inside of the slip case and you can see the different patterns here of the space debris it is all over the book or the slip case rather and here is what the back of the slip case looks like the vault logo wasted space Moreshi, sherman wordy and campbell right there but you get the same look over here on the actual spine of the book vault wasted space Moreshi, Sherman, Wordy, and Campbell. However, Wasted Space, actually let's take the book out of the slipcase. You get Wasted Space right there with this foil stamp on the lettering. Prism? No, no, foil, foil. Uh, you also get it around the word Wasted Space here. It's pretty cool around the logo. I'm not sure if you can tell because of the, let's see, right there. There we go. So you can see it because of the lighting. The slipcase itself in there, there's no pattern or anything it's just white and then let's take a closer look at the book itself wasted space here you have the main characters with again the space debris or meteors perhaps you saw the spine and then the back of the book wasted space the complete saga vault $79.99 being the retail price and then the ISBN while I have the book out I did want to do a little size comparison between this and a deluxe edition, which are as tall as Omnis. So this angle right here will kind of give you a better idea. It is just a slightly bit taller than a DC deluxe edition and just a slightly bit longer. Not by much, just keep that in mind though. So it is a little bit taller, just a tiny little bit taller than a deluxe edition. And to kind of give you a better idea, here's a Marvel Omnibus compared to it. So you can see, it's just a slight bit taller than that. Uh, just a tiny little bit longer. Here, let's look at it from this angle right here. There you go. All right. This is for people to have a better idea how big of a book we're looking at. There is something in here that you'll find at the very back of the book, and that is a fold-out poster. So here's your fold-out poster of the main three characters. Molly Sue, Dust, and of course, Billy Bane. Now there are more characters besides those three that end up on this particular adventure. Now something you probably noticed is that the book does have a flat spine. So here we go. Oh, and look at that. That's right, let's look at that. And while we're looking at that, we might as well look at the binding. So it is sewn binding. And here's what the eye looks like. And what I was looking at earlier was the ribbon, the built-in ribbon. You all know how much I love these. Now we're going to open the book up and I'll give you the pitch. You can find out why I love Michael Moresi's story and Hayden Sherman's wonderful artwork. And why, after I talk about Billy Bane and all these characters, it's called Wasted Space. Alright, let's go ahead and get this open. And I'm sure you could probably tell, but it, there is no dust jacket. It's just art on board. You have this 
nice end sheets here. It's this really thick, almost has like a leather finish to it. And then Vault, all the people behind the book, uh, the making of this particular hardcover. And then the credits right here. You have Michael Moresi, Hayden Sherman, Jason Wordy, and Jim Campbell. Moresi being the writer, Sherman being the artist, Wordy being the colorist, and then the letterer being Campbell there. And then Vault Comics presents Wasted Space. Again, we see a picture of Billy Bain. And kicking it off with Chapter 1. So, all 25 issues of Wasted Space are collected in here. And you see, again, the foil on... That's the word I said, prism. The, the foil around the edges here. And on the spine of the book. That was all due to all the people that love this series and wanted to get it in a hardcover format. Because... It's been available before in a series of five trade paperbacks. As a matter of fact, that's how I read the stories to begin with. But now we have this whole collection. All 25 issues are collected in here. So what we're looking at here are all 25 issues of Wasted Space. It's 672 pages and again, retailing for $79.99. All right. So what in the world is Wasted Space? I've gone on about the book itself and the build, but what is it? What, what, what is this about? This was one of my favorite sci-fi stories that I read in 2019. And I've seen people compare it to Gonzo meets Preacher meets The Fifth Element. Honestly, they're not that far off. So in this alternate world, distant future, doesn't really tell you. By the way, uh, this does have mature content too, so just keep that in mind. In this world, we meet this character of Billy Bane. And Billy Bane at one time was a prophet. He was the word of the creator. Who the creator is, that remains a mystery. And it's a really cool mystery. However, the creator, instead of making Billy the prophet that would save the universe it kind of fell apart just based on the instructions that the creator told Billy to do. So everything went wrong. And ever since this big event that Billy caused, because the creator was speaking through him, because he is the voice of this God, if you will, the universe has fallen apart. And now everybody's after him. However, he disappears. He's had enough. He feels betrayed by the voice. He feels betrayed by the people that once loved him. So he just disappears into the corner of the universe and wants to be left alone. And of course, bounty hunters are after him. Different religious sectors are after him. Uh, there's people that are still after him that want him. And is he still hearing the voice? Uh, that's the big question. And was there ever a voice? Also, the other question. So, in space, he's not alone, though. He is hanging out with Dust. And Dust is the F-U-Q bot. You can sound it out if you want to. But that's not all he does. He's a complete badass, too. He's not just a personal love robot uh, that is to be used for that purpose. He's also a complete badass. And happens to be Billy's best friend. Only friend, really, because everybody's turned their backs on Billy. Until he meets this young girl right here. This is Molly Sue, who also claims to be a prophet, who also claims to hear the voice of this God or this creator. So now he he has a decision to make. Like, what do you do with that knowledge? If if he's not the only one, what does it mean? So these three characters have now a new purpose. And they are gathered together by this being known as the Legion for one purpose, to make things right across the universe. And this Legion character, this big creature, has promised them something. Basically promised Billy something big that kind of makes it uh, not... Well, no, that's a little bit of a spoiler. The something that they've promised Billy is big. So Billy is like, all right, I have no choice, but sure, let's do it. And this mission that they're on is not that easy because through here you're going to meet bounty hunters, you're going to see characters just go after him, and it's a freaking amazing ride. Like from 
issue one all the way to issue 25. And I remember when I said that they're not alone, that it's more than just three characters of just, and yes, you do get amazing, ridiculous images like this throughout the book. Um, so yeah, there's more than just three characters because through these adventures, you get to meet the characters of Fury. You get to meet the characters of Syra and Tyran and also Rex. So it's it definitely feels like an adventure and a world building type of story where really the focus of it is the main characters. Like at first, when you find out like what exactly, let's go back to the beginning a little bit, Billy is and what kind of a jerk he is because he just doesn't want any of this responsibility. He's been there and he's lost a lot. And at first I didn't like him. Because he is kind of a jerk. He's like Han Solo and Luke Skywalker put together with a little bit of a jackass in him. So he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, but he also wants to be just left alone. And it's not until you get through a series of flashbacks about his life and what's happened to him and what he's lost that you kind of learn to appreciate the character and who he is. And you start learning... Uh, this is Fury right there, who is also a F.U.Q. bot, but also a complete badass. She's uh, She was one of my favorite characters through here. But you also learn that all these characters are flawed. That's what made this book work. That's what made it so real. And Hayden Sherman's art style just really fits the tone of the story. Like, it has this independent look to it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, Bill Sienkiewicz mixed with Phil Noto, mixed with like Keith Giffen's experimental phase. I really liked it and it has the, a little bit, you know what? It really feels like a lot of those um, European stories that were brought over in Heavy Metal Magazine when I probably should not have been reading those at a really young age because of the mature content. But the characters is what really kept me reading this. This was a complete page turner. I ended up getting this I ended up getting the slipcase from Vault just a couple of days ago, and I set up last night reading it again from cover to cover because I couldn't remember a couple of the points in here. Um, I couldn't remember how some of the story arcs ended, and damn it, they did not bring me to tears again because I had forgotten about how it all wraps up. It's a beautiful story, and it is about friendship and family, and I feel so weird saying that because of Fast X because I feel like everybody's making that joke now, but it really is. It's about finding your own family out there. It's got that mix of Firefly when everybody feels like they're alone out there in the universe and betrayed by everybody. But here comes a whole new group of people that are willing to accept you for who you are, even though you yourself think you're the scum of the universe. Now, the big question is, was he really hearing voices or was he being manipulated by something else? And what about Molly? Is she also hearing voices or seeing things or is she being manipulated? There's a lot of twists and turns. There's betrayals through here. And it's one that will keep you on the edge of your seat. But this is what the art looks like. The backstory, there's a little bit of a Christmas story that happens all the way at the end, even though it takes place before the actual ending. So keep that in mind as you're reading this. And again, there's your ribbon. Let's look in the back here because all... Oh, yes, that's one thing I forgot to note is that there are no covers. They're just broken up by chapters until you get to the back matter where you're going to see the art of the cover. You're going to see the standard edition cover. This, honestly, his covers look a lot more like Bill Sienkiewicz here. Maybe a little bit of Sean Murphy thrown in there too. I just really like his style. I think it's solid. And we're just going to skip a few. And the end sheets here. We've seen the build of the book, or I'm sorry, we've seen the sewn binding. So there is that. Oh, there's a little... He's got range too, because there's a couple of issues in here that have a different artistic style. Like there's one that's like Calvin and Hobbes style in here. But the pages, there's so, the page, Uncanny Omar talk pretty one day. But the pages themselves are this really thick and glossy paper. And let's look at, I know I showed some already, but let's look at the way the book lays over. So you have it here towards the beginning. Um, very minor gutter loss, honestly. It is sewn binding in the way that I looks. You're going to get most of the artwork. And there's not a lot of spread pages until you get to about, uh, I want to say issue four or five. And then 
here's the way the yeah marked it here the way the book lays over when you're in the middle of it so it lays over fine really no gutter loss there and then the way the book lays over towards the back of the book again no gutter loss and this is like the next to the last page so space adventure story about family and friendship and everybody in the universe after you because you thought you were doing the right thing and it turn its back on you all right let's talk about how you can get a copy of this book now now that I've talked about the series, here's how you can get your hands on it. So on October 18th of 2023, this year, this will be available through retailers. So you can get the book itself from your retailer, your comic book shop, or online comic book store. The slipcase edition will be available through Vault's comic shop, and I'll leave the links in the description of the video. Too. And speaking of link, I'm also putting the link of Vault's current Kickstarter, Sainted Love by Steve Orlando and artist Joe Poda. And it is a time traveling romance story. So that link is in the description of the video. And yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below. And don't forget to smash that like button. Thank you again to Vault for sending us an advanced copy of this beautiful slipcase edition. That's it everyone. Stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. <laughs>